Hi, my name is Justin Odisho, and in this video, I'm going to show you 10 cool effects in Adobe After Effects. So I've just got a couple of sample clips open on a composition, and we're going to be working in the Effects and Presets panel. And in the first one, we're going to open up the Color Correction panel, and there's a cool effect in here called Colorama. This is kind of After Effects' way to do different type of gradient maps. So whenever you apply an effect onto a clip, you can go on the left hand side to the effects control panel and we can see all of the effects that we've stacked and applied onto the clip in order. And so here's the colorama effect and we can see all the different parameters that we can adjust. We have input phase, output cycle, modify and a few others. But our output cycle is going to be the main one. You can pick any color you want and double click on it and choose a color of your own and you'll see that reflect in the image. It's kind of based on the highlights and the shadows. Or you can use these preset panels that they have. So they have different hue cycles, negative image, color ramps. There's really a lot of flexibility and different effects that you can achieve just by tinting and color ramping. And all of them just within this colorama effect along with your custom effects. So as the video plays, you'll see that it remains with this gradient applied onto it. And not only can you create these cool like thermal or tinted effects, you can also animate things. So you can shift the phase, the input phase, so that the colors are reflecting or taking over different surfaces. And just with as with any other parameter, if you click on the stopwatch icon, and then move forward, you can always add animation to things. So if you drop down the layer menu, go to all the effects that you have on there, you'll see in the colorama effect that we have two keyframes here, one and two under the phase in this example. And as you play between those, you'll see the phase will slowly start to shift as we shifted it. And you can animate anything you want and you can add expressions onto anything you want or just leave it as is. So there's a couple other advanced tools for you, so like cycle repetition and more, but lots of fun and flexibility all within this one effect. Another cool effect that we have is the displacement map effect. So in this case, I'm gonna drag another layer from my project media panel, and I have a video clip of some waves here. So we've got some waves. We have an effect called displacement map, which is in the distort video effects folder right here, displacement map. And any one of these that I'm saying, you can also just search using the search bar. So here's displacement map. And if I add this displacement map onto that original video clip and choose for the map layer, that new or that water clip that I have, What's happening is it's taking the water and it's rippling the clip underneath to that water clip. Now you see in this case, the two clips are different sizes. So that's why we have this displacement map, stretch map to fit or tile map. In this case, we'll stretch map to fit. And what we've done is we've created this unique water ripple displacement is using this clip on top. So technically I didn't have to adjust the scale of that clip. It's being stretched as a map here in the effect, but you can apply these custom displacements on text or video clips or graphic or shape objects. So you can adjust the max horizontal or vertical displacement, and you can play around with any sort of clip, not just a water ripple. Any clip can displace another clip, even non-video clips things that you generated. So that kind of goes into another effect that we're going to talk about, which is fractal noise. This is a effect that is going to allow us to create clouds and noise and also animate them in different ways. So you have lots of different types. You have basic turbulent noise. This kind of can create all kind of cool digital effects and you can increase the contrast, brightness, complexity and animate them. So you can see along with the previous effect, if I was to use this as a displacement map, I simply have to 
choose effects and masks under the displacement map and hide the visibility of that so we can see. And now you see we're using that fractal noise as a displacement of this original image. So you can keep it as a static displacement, like so, just kind of like a glassy look. Or you can animate that fractal noise and it'll also animate what's underneath. So fractal noise can be really cool. You can also color it to create different digital looks or textures. But let's say we wanted to distort things without a displacement map. Another really fun and cool effect is the wave warp. That's also in the distort video effects folder and you might be familiar with it from Premiere Pro. And this is a cool effect because it automatically comes with its own kind of animation. You can see it's there's a wave speed option in the effects panel. And if I increase that a bit, maybe increase the wave width and the wave height and also pin the edges back so we don't get those black corners, we can get this ripple happening that mathematical sine wave, but we can also choose other types of waves, like square waves. That's creating a cool effect. I can slow down the speed or turn it all the way down to nothing if I want. And I can adjust the wave width and wave height to get these cool kind of displacement and distortion effects, and also adjust the angle and the phase. So wave warp is a cool one because it automatically comes with its own constantly running animation. You don't have to add any keyframes or expressions for this wave to undulate. Another cool one that we have is the VR digital glitch. So this one's in the VR folder, the immersive video folder. And there's a bunch of cool ones in here, but digital glitch is particularly cool because it gives us some options for that red, green, blue color separation just kind of automatically without having to mess around with the color channels. And it also gives us this cool digital glitch. So you can open up the color distortion to increase that kind of channel separation. And you can also lower or strengthen that geometrical kind of distortion. So if you wanted to just do like the color distortion, you could turn down all those geometric distortions a bit. And you can also animate that as well. So you can make the color go different directions, different phases. And remember, as I showed you the keyframes, you can do that for any parameter. And not only can you do keyframes, like, I, like I've been saying, if you hold option and click on a keyframe, you can add expressions as well, which is the power of After Effects. So instead of having the value be a certain amount, I can I can change it to be value equals time, for example. That means when it's at five seconds, the value will be five. In this case, let's do times times 100. So every one second, we're going to move 100 degrees. So you can see it's kind of going side to side there. And that's just one little expression I did off the top of my head, but you have a whole host of options. If you actually click this play triangle button, you have a bunch of different expressions and I have a whole separate video about some useful expressions if you wanna go more in depth in that kind of branch. Another really useful one we have for distortion is mesh warp. So this is another warping options, but it's cool because we can warp based on this mesh grid and we can physically just pull or pinch a certain layer. So if I wanted to distort along more or less rows and columns, I can do that and get these custom kind of distortions that I can make in one direction or the other, kind of opening or closing things up how I want and adjusting the rows and columns to my liking. So that can be a pretty cool one, mesh warp. Another cool one we have is the CC Collider. So this one's actually in the stylized video effects folder. And what this allows us to do is create these kind of kaleidoscopic images out of our video and choose the ways in which they're folded up. So in Premiere Pro, something like this would be kind of difficult to do. You'd have to add a bunch of mirror effects and make sure they all line up. In After Effects, you can simply choose the size 
that it spreads and also the type of mirroring. So you can unfold it on itself. You can do it like a wheel. You can do it like a fish head or different patterns that they have, flip flop. And you can also adjust kind of the rotation angle. So you can take your original video clip and turn it into something almost unrecognizable, but still very cool, like this animated kaleidoscope, basically, if, you have, if you've ever looked through a kaleidoscope. Another super cool effect we have is the CC wide time effect. This is actually in the time folder. And if I drag this on a clip, it allows me to go forward and backward in steps, kind of creating like an echo or a shutter speed blend forward and backward. And if I play that clip, we take our original video clip and turn it into this kind of low shutter speed, smooth or wide time, they call it effect, making something appear as if it was shot in a really low shutter speed with lots of motion blur. So maybe 50 steps forward is a lot, but if you just do like 10 and 10, you just get this cool echo effect happening, which can really add some different stylization to it. And you can also combine it with other effects to set it off. I have a whole separate tutorial on creating like a step printing like effect by adding the wide time and a posterized time to create sort of a step printing effect, which is popular, like a stop motion, low shutter effect. Another cool effect we have is the CC environment effect in the perspective folder. But for this to work, we're first going to have to go to layer and create a new camera layer, add that to our composition, and then drag the CC environment onto the clip that you want. And now we can kind of pan around this clip in 3D almost. So I'm going to just add a lot of lens distortion so we zoom out. And now we can horizontally pan around our image, even though it's a regular video clip, we kind of get this panning allowed that wasn't possible. This can be really cool too for animating photos. You can animate photos in this way as if there was a camera there. And if you go into your camera that we created, you can also look around in different ways in this way. So you can look up and down, although there is these kind of artificial anchor points. I have a whole tutorial actually on how to animate a photo in this way. And it's like a concert photo that you look around the crowd. And lastly, another really cool thing that After Effects can do is generate audio spectrums and audio waveforms. So if I add this onto a new solid layer, for example, add an audio spectrum, I can choose which audio layer I want to use. So ideally you'd want to throw in a a sound, talking, or music track. In this case, I'll just use the audio from a video clip. And you can increase the frequency, the height amounts, like so, and it'll create these automatically animated or visualized audio visualizer. The difference between the spectrum and the waveform is just the way that the line is. Rather than bars, this one is more like the actual waveform. But I have whole, I have a bunch of tutorials actually. If you search on my channel for audio spectrums and waveforms, on how to manipulate these, how to do circular ones, and different ones, and really play around with all these settings. But you can choose all the strengths and the colors, and that's a really cool thing that After Effects can do. So those are ten fun, some of my favorite, just or just some cool effects in After Effects. If you enjoyed this video, check out the playlist on my channel. I've actually covered every single effect in After Effects in a series where I've gone folder by folder and gone over what every single effect does. So you can find those on my channel. My name is Justin Odisho. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.